You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit HD2. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Growing in Grace. Happy Juneteenth Day. Uh, I'm your host, Chico Whitaker, and today we'll be talking about Romans 8.31. Gracious Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you touch each and every one that's watching this program today. Lord, we ask that you lift them up and strengthen them, Lord. We ask that you heal the sick, cast out devils, and uh, help those that are bereaved. Comfort their hearts strengthen their minds, and bless their spirits. Lord, we ask that you use someone to lift up their neighbor, friend, or relative. Bless those who are in the nursing home and in the jails, that they may repent and trust you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Now, today we're going to be talking about Romans 8.31. For those who are not familiar with it, it says, If God be for you, who can be against you? A friend turns his back on you. That happens a lot of times these days. But if he turns his back on you, maybe he wasn't the true friend that you need. But God is a friend that never leaves you nor forsakes you even until the end of the world. A teacher lost her job. A teacher lost her job. Maybe because the school closed, uh, because of adrenaline enrollment, downsizing, or Maybe it was due to nepotism and they wanted to put somebody else in that position that was uh, a friend of the principal or whoever was an authority. But God has a better opportunity for you. Revelations 3.20 say, Behold, I stand before you and not. If any man shall open the door, it could be a woman or vice versa. I will come in and sup with you and you and come in and sup with you and you and me. So the Lord has greater opportunities for you. A radio station wouldn't air your commercials. Don't get disgusted. Don't get frustrated. God will open doors that there is not a room enough to contain for you. So just remember, if God be for you, who can be against you? Some kids went to jail for a crime that they did not do. How often do we hear about the Innocent Project? where a man, woman, or a child got locked up due to mistaken identity, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, perhaps was with somebody that committed a crime, and they didn't know it, you know, somebody might have just picked them up and took them for a ride. And they got pulled over. The person they was with probably was on parole and got locked up. But, you know, they call it sometimes guilt 
by association. So if you with somebody that's usually, uh, let's say, bad or been getting into trouble and uh, you're with them, whatever they do, if, if they get picked up, uh, you're with them, you know, you can uh, be locked up also just by being an innocent bystander. It happens all the time. We hear about people going to jail for 20, 30, or 40 years because they look like somebody. Or this person thought that they uh, committed a crime. But God can bring you out of any situation. My brother's car was stolen. Do he moan, uh, worry about that car? Although he had insurance, after the investigation, uh, they would give him a refund for a car, or perhaps once the car is recovered, if it's not badly uh, taken apart, where it's beyond repairable, uh, if they can fix it, they will. If not, the insurance company will let him get another one. But not at the price that he paid the car for. He brought the car for it because of depreciation over the years. Uh, someone broke my cousin's house. Now, This is basically fabricated, though. It didn't happen. But sometimes, if a person doesn't like you, or just out there for kicks, they do something, and you can be in trouble for it. Case in point, true story. I, I say my, they break my cousin's house and this is fabricated. Uh, some time ago, uh, I was over at my cousin's house and they stayed in the Seven Mile Livernois area. I haven't seen them for, uh, I say, close to two years. Now, at this time, I went over their house. I was uh, out uh, for vacation, or I got out um, that day. I don't recall what it was because it happened in the uh, 80s sometime. And... We went down Auto Drive. I had on my ROTC uniform on. Uh, while we was coming down Auto Drive, there was a family uh, in the living room or dining room. They didn't have curtains up, so you can see they were either watching TV or eating. Make a long story short, like I say, I was over at my cousin's house, and I was visiting. We had just went to the store Wrigley's on uh, uh, Wyoming and uh, Seven Mile. Uh, we went uh, down Auto Drive, and I forget what street it was, either Kentucky or Ohio, somewhere around that area. And it was like six of us. One of the individuals was with the group that we was uh, with, with my cousin and them. They had just got through playing football at UAD field. And uh, like I said, they went to Wrigley's. I don't recall that they brought snacks or whatever. 
but someone picked up a rock and it was a size of a rock and they threw it and it hit a window. Uh, the window shattered and being that I know I didn't throw the rock the individual didn't give us no warning they pick up the rock through at the window and started running I was talking with my cousin next minute I heard some shouting and the individual a uh, window got knocked out. They started cussing. Make a long story short, they started shooting. And it had to be about four or five gunshots. I was walking. I turned around and I heard something say boom. And at that time, it went past my head. And through the grace of God, I didn't get struck, but it was a bullet. And that was a warning to me. Everybody you hang out with are not your friends. And it was, if it wasn't for God and the angels watching over me, as Psalm 23 says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I could have been dead. But God covered me with his angels. So as I say again, if God be for you, who can be against you? Okay. A tree fell on my porch. And no one got hurt. Thank God. Uh, this happened some time ago when I stayed on 15th. It was a hot July summer. My uncle was alive then, Uncle Robert. And he had just got off from work from Fago, a uh, company driving the truck. Uh, they stayed upstairs from us, and we stayed downstairs in two family flats. And he was the type, he would make up stories. And sometimes, you know how you hear people say, if I'm lying, may God strike me dead. You shouldn't play with God like that. But people say that all the time. Or either I swear on my mother, and the Bible tells us we shouldn't swear. But my uncle was talking to my parents one night. Me and my sister, Deborah, was on the porch. And... It was a hot July summer. Uh, we heard a strong wind, and it could have been a tornado that day, th that, that night rather. But sometime between 11 and 2 a.m., a tree might have been about 50 feet uh, fell from across the street to our house and everything. Knocked a couple of uh, shingles off the roof and shattered the roof. But the branches and stuff was uh, at our door and we didn't get hurt. So, no matter whatever you do, God is always with you. Whether you in his grace or not. He say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, my uncle was telling a tall tale then. And be it coincidence or what, the tree did fall down. But uh, we were all spared. So I say, thank you, Lord. Uh, just the other day, my son, Jalen, was supposed to graduate from high school. Uh, he went to school basically every day until he lost his brother back in May, which I 
you know, told the audience about it. And after he lost his brother, I told him he didn't have to go to school for that week. Fast forward, the second week he didn't go. But he took classes online. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, he went to get his cap and gown. Now, they gave him the tonsils, they gave him a cup, and something else for Martin Luther King. And he'd been practicing going to the ceremonies and everything. But being that he's antiplegic, which is small or dwarfism, they didn't have no gown for his size. But mind you, he paid his dues, uh, paid for the senior yearbook and everything else. Then all of a sudden they tell him they just had the graduation Friday and they told him the night before Thursday he got a text that he didn't have enough hours to graduate. So at first he was disappointed. Uh, he stayed up for the last 10 days working to get uh, assignments that they said he didn't have. Now, mind you, he did the assignments. He met the qualifications. But they said for something in the 11th grade, uh, they didn't have, which he had his stuff. He showed, um, you know, the uh, counselor this on the uh, online, and then he sent the text on his phone, which they supposed to review it. He showed them where he had this work done, but they never did get back with him the next day, which was the 17th. So he couldn't graduate with his class. He has to take two weeks of summer school in order to make up for some work that he already did. So he was a little bit disappointed at first. We talked to him, and we prayed about it, as we do every night, about certain individual families, friends, or those that are bereaved or suffer COVID. And we prayed that, you know, things would be all right. Now, the principal did uh, get, you know, his lessons and stuff, but they haven't got back with us. But Jalen will be able to graduate, but just at a later time due to something that the Board, a minute, board of Education uh, messed up, which we was thinking about taking to a higher power, but we know that the Lord will work it out. So no matter what you do, God will see you through. A friend of mine, uh, we grew up with, uh, he worked at Chrysler some time ago. Uh, I don't remember all the detail, but he got sick and he was off for a certain length of time. He was an inspector and when he went back to work, the job was trying to get, uh, they was trying to uh, let him loose. Because as an inspector, you know, he represented uh, the union and also the equipment. He was off the job and was discouraged. But one of the songs, um, sermons he preached one time, all goodbye isn't gone. And I can remember that sermon now, and it was almost 35 years ago. But fast forward, uh, they had meetings, arbitrations, uh, and Chrysler wasn't able to get a hold, to get a uh, release him. 
they gave him his job back with back pay. And now the individual is doing well. He's a bishop now, pastoring a thriving church. And I hope to get him on the show one day. Uh, we lost touch of one another. But for those that know him, if you ever run into Bishop Lothar Williamson, tell him to give his buddy Chico a call. His name is Bishop Lothar Williamson. I hear he's doing fine work in the city of Detroit, preaching the gospel in Michigan and all over Canada and other places. The Lord has blessed me and enriched his ministry because he trusts in the Lord. So friends, neighbors, uh, Christians, whatever you do, put the Lord first and he will take care of you. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Now, for the rest of the lesson, perhaps you're in a house and it's dilapidated and you're trying to move and you don't know where the money's going to come through, come from, or how you're going to be able to find a better house. We wrestle with these thoughts, these questions. But you will persevere if you only trust the Lord. He will help you through. Touch the Lord. Trust him. And uh, obey his commandments and he would help you. Because the Bible say he will never leave you nor forsake you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Now, for those that's looking for meals to help you to get to the summer, there's a uh, program called Helps Kitchen. They're here every day. Helps Kitchen, uh, uh, Brilliance Detroit is partnered with Helps Kitchen, a nonprofit, to help family in need. Of meals. You can get delicious meals from local restaurants. And they're free. They're gratis. Free of charge. You must complete all three steps below. Text the word food to 313-488-2000. Forty-three twenty-one. That's three one three four four eight forty-three twenty-one to request a meal. So that's step one. Step two. You will be linked to a nearby restaurant and given a choice of date and time to pick up your meal. They will give you a date and time to come and pick it up, and it will be hot and warm. Step three, don't step this step. Make sure to answer each, each text when you get it. You will receive a confirmation text with your pickup location. When your order is complete, you must confirm your order before you pick up the food. And it's free. Um... They give you a certain amount of meals according to your family. It could be pizza. It can be jerky's chicken. It can be Chinese or soul food. They have a variety of it. And it's on assignment times and dates. Arrive at the restaurant and give them the text of your last four digits. I'm give them the last four digits of your phone number, and they will give you the meal to take home free of charge. So, 
if you are short in your income and don't have enough food, Growing in Grace gives you opportunity to take advantage of certain programs that we tell you about from time to time. Also, this summer, we usually uh, bring food to people's houses, big boxes of food uh, that we get from New Revelations Church and uh, other places. We will be doing it uh, for the seniors, and I will give you more detail about it in the coming months. For all the graduates, graduates, stay focused. Learn all you can. Also, there are summer jobs out there for you. Taking uh, opportunities of the jobs that's being offered and work there so you can get money to go to school and college. Until next time, acquire the knowledge that you need. For if God be for you, who can be against you? This is Growing in Grace. I want to salute all the fathers that uh, had their families or loved ones to take them out yesterday for Father's Day. God bless you. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace.